why Tesla won't and shouldn't open their supercharger network with the math at the end. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. The whole problem comes down to holiday weekends. When Tesla decided to move forward with mass-produced electric vehicles, there was a problem. A gas station on every corner, but essentially no place to charge your car. They knew that to reach any sort of widespread adoption, they needed chargers, and they couldn't rely on third parties to provide them. It was an expensive but necessary decision to go it alone and build a vast network of chargers. So why can't Tesla make them available to just everyone? Most of the chargers I see are far from full. So for those ones, on those days, it wouldn't be a big deal at all. But Tesla buyers are paying a premium for access to that network, and I'd expect some justified frustration if a location has a wait time and any of the stalls are in use by non-Teslas. What then? Well, I guess they could allow supercharger access to non-Teslas when they're below a certain capacity, maybe half full. Wouldn't be too hard to create a second app for non-Tesla owners to see where stalls are available. But creating a second class of customers like that would lead to resentment among those drivers and additional frustration when they have nowhere to charge on busy holiday weekends. Tesla is effectively subsidizing their chargers. Even if they break even on a per site basis, does that cover the cost of installation and maintenance? The other companies need to figure out a solution. Pouring money into Electrify America or some new as yet unannounced network would allow them to subsidize their buyers. They don't want to. That costs money. They're used to making ICE cars and letting buyers sort it out for themselves. Those days are coming to an end. They should just be glad Tesla doesn't have dual supercharger slash CCS ports like they do on the Chinese models. Chinese owners get to seamlessly use superchargers or any other charge network available. Legacy car companies sabotage themselves and their customers, and now they're hoping Tesla might come along and bail them out? Why don't they just build their own? Apart from the fact that they still have seemingly little interest in electrifying their fleets, it comes down to a problem of a lack of demand caused by the lack of supply. Tesla knew there would be demand, so they just did it. They get to reap those rewards. The legacy guys are stuck with the only option being to do it all together, and they sometimes don't like doing that, even when it's in their own best interests. So why don't you and I form a company, and we, we just do it for them? Well, because it's really hard and there's not much money in it. You ready to get into the math? The cost to build a four-stall charging station is around $250,000, according to a 2017 UBS report. For funsies, they also set a 12-month price target of $160 a share, and that's before the split. At the one-year anniversary of that guess, it was trading at $6,702 in new dollars, or $335.10. So, they're not always good at predicting the future, no matter how good they are at understanding the present. 250000 just for the site installation. That doesn't include any of the R&D, logistics, or the salaries of everyone involved. Let's round it up to 300000 and hope for large enough economies of scale to keep those estimates reasonable. The truth is, we'd likely burn through tens of millions before we open the first station, but let's just assume there's gonna be some scale. Let's also assume the land is free, since a number of businesses seem interested in having chargers on site to attract customers. This strategy won't work over the long term, since eventually everybody will be driving an EV, and then they're just regular customers, but it will be in the beginning. The average industrial electricity rate in the U.S. is around $0.07 cents per kilowatt hour, but most of these chargers would be in commercial areas, so they would be paying the higher $0.13.31 cents per kilowatt hour on average. Electrify America charges customers $0.43 cents per kilowatt hour, and while they do have lower price subscription options, they're not likely to save the average customer much, which is why they offer them in the first place. That rate leaves a profit of $0.30 cents per kilowatt hour. 
Chevy Bolt has a 66 kilowatt hour battery, so a customer charging from 20% to 80% would require 39.6 kilowatts and generate $11.76 in profit. Our tiny station will need to charge 25,516 cars in this scenario just to break even. If you've ever seen an Electrify America station, you know they're more likely to see 25,000 tumbleweeds than cars because they are just plain empty. If we want to break even on this location within a year, we'll need 70 cars a day or 17 cars per day per stall. This is only possible mathematically, not in practice. To be compelling, they need to reduce the charging rate. Instead of 43 cents, they need to go closer to Tesla's 28 cents. This cuts the profit in half to just 15 cents per kilowatt with five bucks 82 per session in profit and increases the number of cars to pay off our humble station to 51,571. Even the average gas station sees fewer than 100 cars a day, and ICE drivers don't have a gas pump inside their garage to cover 95% of their automotive energy needs. So now, our station is going to need to handle 35 cars a day to break even in a year, but we've literally run out of hours in the day. If we spread it out over five years, we only need seven cars per stall per day that's still a tall order, and it doesn't account for any repairs or maintenance or even the billing fees. In 2019, Tesla boasted over 2.5 million charging sessions across 14,081 stalls, which is an average of only 142 charge sessions per stall per year. Each stall averaged 0.39 charging sessions per day. For you and I to break even on our new venture, we need 1,800% more utilization than what Tesla enjoys. That's a tough sell, and tougher still since a lot of Tesla's 2 million charges came during times of peak demand where their clever transformers can get a car in and out in 20 minutes while we're stuck trickling electrons into all these second-rate go-bots. So let's use Tesla's 0.39 charges per stall per day figure to understand how quickly we'll break even and start rolling in the dough. Five bucks 82 profit per charge, need 51,000 charges to break even, times 0.39 charges per day, 1.6 charges per day for the whole station. That's $9.07 in profit for us per day. It would take us 33,000 days to break even. That's 91 years. Okay, fine. Let's get generous with the numbers. Let's say we can build that station for 150 grand, and we're going to charge 10% more than Tesla for the juice, since plenty of expensive gas stations succeed across the street from the cheaper ones. And we not only count on cars with bigger batteries, but also the average driver charging from 10% to 90% in a session. All of these are very generous assumptions. Well, that bumps the profit per car up to 11 bucks 32, but that's still only 1766 a day. Our break even point has come down, but it's still 23 years. Remember, gas stations make most of their money selling things other than gasoline. Yes, Elon's mission is to hasten the advent of sustainable energy, but at the beginning, middle, and end of the day, Tesla is still a for-profit company, and they do have to answer to investors. As a shareholder, I'm not bitter about Tesla losing money by providing more superchargers to customers. It's good business. It's the cup of ice water and the puppuccinos that Starbucks loses a nickel on to keep me coming in for my $6 mocha. But I'll be damned if Starbucks should feel obligated to give out free cups to the guy outside dispensing from a two-liter bottle and telling his customers to figure it out on their own where they get the cups. If you want a better charging experience, especially on road trips, you'll get better mileage with a company that actually wants to sell you electric cars. Not because the government says they have to, or to compete in some obscure market segment, because it's just what they do.
Tesla stalked their nuts away all summer while the lazy squirrels just basked in the sun. Well, winter's almost here. The old guys got enough nuts to weather the storm. If they don't just get by on those, there's still time to get themselves sorted out. But otherwise, guys, it's going to be challenging. So that's why Tesla won't and shouldn't unlock their superchargers for just anybody. What did I miss or misunderstand? Leave a comment below. If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up if you appreciate the video, and subscribe if you're not already. It's the only way YouTube knows to share this with others who share the same fascination with this stuff as you and me. So stay tuned, stay juicy, and I will see you guys soon.